कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटों का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी इन द न्यूज़ टुनाइट 250,000 फिजियंस बिलो पॉवर्टी लाइन स्टूडेंट्स अफेक्टेड बाय ट्रैफिक डिलेज एंड विलेजेस टोल्ड टू वेकेट डेंजरस होम्स फ्रॉम द स्टूडियोस ऑफ एफबीसी सुबा एडविन नाम Pulavnaka Fiji first tonight infrastructure minister Chone Usamate will meet with the Fiji Roads Authority and the Land Transport Authority to speed up the rehabilitation of critical roads in the central division Usamate says he is aware that commuters have faced delays of up to 3 hours in the last 2 days Ritika Pratap reports the minister himself was stuck in traffic this morning Chone Usamate agrees the delays are excessive and even he is an exempt from the situation so it's a double whammy Either you completely stop the work and let people get to on time or find the balance between it. So for me, it took two hours to get to work today, so I can understand the frustrations that uh, people have. But we'll just uh, discuss it with the FRA and then the how things can be split up. The Fiji Roads Authority on Sunday estimated travel delays of up to 90 minutes, but this may need to be revised following backlash from commuters. We'll get our guys to do some time trials once again. Prasad explains the FRA can't open the dug-up cross-sections of the roads at peak hours to ease the traffic flow. Every time we uh, prepare the surface and then let the vehicles go on again, uh, to re-prepare the surface, it takes us another day, so we lose another day of sun and then it starts raining. So that's the reason why we have gone as okay, that we prepare surface uh, and if it's raining, we will not open that surface for the vehicles to run. Look, cyclones, everything that's happening. We fix the road today and next day the flood comes and takes it out again. And that's, what, that's what's been happening. If weather permits, contractors work on one stretch of the road for a maximum of three days before moving to another. Work has been delayed since December due to prolonged rainy weather. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Heads of schools are being urged to be accommodating if students in the central division reach school late due to the current peak time traffic issues. Education Minister Rosie Egbert says an alert was sent to all schools yesterday urging heads of schools to exercise responsibility in dealing with such situations. This comes as hundreds of commuters are facing issues of getting to work and school on time. To avoid being caught in the traffic rush, some students are now seen in school as early as 6 a.m. Kritika Kumar reports. The Education Minister says students can't get past the school gate as early as 6.15 a.m. and this is a situation currently being faced in the Suva Nosori area. I would just like to request parents to ensure that when they do drop the students at that, you know, that early by 6 o'clock, they must also understand that uh, students will not be supervised. Akbar also highlights that for students having to leave home early, Easing the restricted times on e-transport cards will not be easy. These cards are programmed and it was actually on the request of the Fiji Bus Operators Association that we brought the restrictions and there was a reason for that. Fiji Bus Operators Association President Nisar Ali Shah says students travelling before 6.30 will have to pay the adult fare. Everything depends on uh, on uh, on uh, Vodafone and Ministry for Education. We will follow the instruction at the moment. We can't carry them free. The authority has to uh, uh, advise us. Then we'll act accordingly. The ministry last year had placed a restriction on blue subsidized cards for students to make them operational from 6.30 in the morning to 9 a.m. and then from 2.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. And Kritika is live now. Kritika, what will it take to modify the e-transport cards? Edwin, uh, Vodafone Fiji has confirmed that the restriction is only placed on the government-subsidized blue e-transport cards. There are no restrictions on the self-paying cards, which can be used during any time of the day or night. The restriction placed on the use of blue e-transport cards have been implemented as required by the Education Ministry. Vodafone Head of E-Commerce Shalendra Prasad says they are open to making changes to the system as and when required by the Ministry. However, he adds, they have not received any confirmation by the Ministry in terms of changes to the system or the timings. Edwin. Thank you, Kritika.
Economic revival is critical for the government, which is why it's aggressively pursuing access to COVID-19 vaccines. Minister for Economy A.S. Sayed Kayum says Fiji is suffering a double whammy with the pandemic and recent tropical cyclones causing a steep decline in our gross domestic product. Koroi Tandulala reports. Fiji's debt level is likely to increase further by the end of July due to the impacts of the COVID-19 on the economy. With the budgeted level of borrowings for this fiscal year, debt levels are projected to increase to around $8.3 billion, or over 83% of GDP, at the end of July 2021. Members of opposition in response to the figures highlighted says there is a need to relook at economic recovery strategy. I think it is very important for us to have a recovery plan, Mr. Speaker, not for three years, but for five years. Sir Guillaum says it's unfortunate that Fiji's economic plight has been turned into a political issue, saying both sides of the House need to bend together. We understand what these figures really mean, and we understand the stakes of our recovery. We understand it means jobs for our people. We understand it means dignity and security. And that is why our economy's revival is the most critical priority on our agenda. We need to identify what is the problem. And the problem is the Honourable Minister. The problem is in. Inflation has remained in the negative for the past 15 months. And Sayed Kayum says if we remain in this situation for a year, we risk erasing much of the progress achieved over the years. Kuroi Tandulala, FBC News. And we now join Koroi live. Koroi, how is the economy shaping up so far this year? Thanks, Edwin. Foreign reserve for the time being remains at a comfortable level at around $2.2 billion, and this is sufficient to cover 6.7 months of retained imports. Although foreign reserve is at a comfortable level for the time being, there is a need for a proactive and sustainable measures to be put in place to address underlying balances for payment challenges. Economic recovery for now is largely dependent on when borders will reopen. However, uncertainty remains as as to when borders will fully open, which conditions will be placed on travel, and what sort of additional requirements will be put in place as well if and when borders reopen. The Minister for Economy in Parliament also highlighted that the projection for 2021 to 2022 is anywhere between 1.6% to 8%. Now we have to mind that this is also largely orders open and if it opens it also depends on the visitor arrival number as well he also noted that for 2022 to 2023 projection for growth is around four to eight percent however these projections are currently under review for the time being the main priority is securing covid 19 vaccine and for eligible fijians to register vaccinations when the program rolls out as this is the first biggest step towards economic recovery edwin Nakakurei. A little over 258,000 Fijians are living in poverty. The Household Income and Expenditure Survey for 2019 and 2020 estimates the official national poverty headcount was 29.9% or about 45,724 households. The National Basic Needs Poverty Line for an adult per year is $2,179 or $41.91 per week. The report released today reveals that about 62.2% of the poor reside in rural areas. The average annual household income was 26,249. The estimates are based on a sample of 6,000 households. Minister for Poverty Alleviation, Meresene Vudiwanga, is expected to comment later. Up ahead, seedlings for cyclone hit farmers. And Laos sees strong winds. By today, I Radio Fiji both Radio Fiji Rosuta. Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharka. Welcome back. Villagers of Namba Vatu in Draketi Madhuata have been advised that they need to vacate their homes now. The Ministry of Lands has confirmed the village is unsafe for inhabitation. Eleanor Turangayview has more. The Geological Survey Division of the Ministry of Lands and Mineral Resources has been monitoring the land cracks appearing all over Namba Vatu village in Draketi Madhuata since a week ago. From what we've noticed, we've put markers from our first day and we've seen that these markers have widened. 
So that tells us that there's still excess water beneath the surface of the soil. The tension cracks have left several homes damaged, with walls broken and floors collapsing. They are visible from the top of the village right down to the bottom of the hill. From our technical view, we, we recommend that they uh, vacate the houses, uh, seeing that we're still within the cycling period. Following his visit to the village over the weekend, Minister for Lands and Mineral Resources, Chone Usamate, says it's best that the villagers adhere to the recommendation of the technical experts. It's better to you know, listen to what they're saying and we'll try to come up with some mitigation measures and hopefully we'll come up with something to make sure that nobody's life is lost. There are about 80 homes in Nambava to village. 47 of these are directly affected by the land cracks and the families are now taking shelter at Ndreketi Central College. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. Fiji has taken a major step in protecting children from prostitution and pornography in agreeing to ratify international conventions. However, during debate in Parliament today, Attorney General A. S. A. Ed Kayum revealed that one opposition MP failed to protect a child by posting a half-nude picture on social media. Kritika Kumar reports government ministers had to step in and have the picture taken down. Attorney General Ayaseed Kiyum took a swipe at the opposition MP Linda Tambuya for her social media post. Honorable Tambuya had in the recent past put up a post of a, a young girl who was naked from waist above getting some medical attention and put it up as a post as to what a wonderful medical treatment she's getting. Tambuya claims she had permission from the child's parent and was trying to create awareness on rheumatic heart disease. When the Honourable Minister reached out to me and we had discussed it personally, it was then taken down after I spoke to the parent. So please, you need to qualify what you state and not just straight out say that it was my action even though a consent was given. Said Kiyum says MPs have a huge level of influence in the community and need to be cautious about what they post. To have those types of photographs posted, Mr. Speaker, sir, by a member of parliament is not only distasteful because purely for public relations perspective, but more so here we are displaying a semi-naked teenager on social media. Parliament this afternoon voted to ratify the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the Sale of Children, Child Prostitution and Child Pornography. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Land ownership issues at Korosomo outside Senganga are delaying the construction of the new realigned road beside the slip. Road work has been stopped while the Fiji Roads Authority, with the help of the Madhuwata Provincial Office, sorts out the issue. Eleanor Turangaiviu has more. The 800-meter realigned road is located about 50 to 70 meters from the current slip area at Korosomo Hill. After initially seeking permission from the Matangali Nathonge last week for the construction work on the hill, the Fiji Roads Authority is again dealing with more landowners. A few more uh, landowners that have come and say that it was their land, so we just want to make it... Uh, uh, what you call this, demarcate the land properly and then get all the landowners who say that it's their land and we can go through the Rokotui and get the things sorted out. This has not delayed the construction work and it has affected FRA's completion timeline. But uh, our uh, aim is still to get uh, the heavy, heavy load on that uh, have you load trucks on that uh, realigned road uh, by Friday now. Motorists are now using the Tambia Nanduri Coastal Road, a feeder road that has now become boggy due to the current weather situation and constantly being reinstated by FRA contractors. At the end of the day, the most important thing is the safety of people. We need people to travel, but uh, make sure that they travel safely. Only vehicles less than 10 tons are allowed to use the Tambia Nanduri Coastal Road as the bridge at Langere has a weight restriction. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. 19,779 households were provided seed packages containing five commodities after tropical cyclone Yasa devastated farms last month. Agriculture Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says this is part of their immediate rehabilitation efforts. Kelly Vadala reports. These packages will guarantee families getting vegetables within three months. 7,000 households 
seed packages were sent to Tavini, an eastern division, to be distributed there as well. 7,402 households were provided with 10 Kumala cuttings, 1,114 households provided with Bele cuttings and Kasaba cuttings. In an effort to save injured livestock in Vanu level, the ministry also deployed a mobile veterinary clinic. Also, 2,500 day old chicks were distributed in the Bua and Madwata area to farmers along with feed. Due to damage caused by TC Yasa to the flora, the Ministry of Agriculture also supplied 190 bee farmers with over 3,000 3, kg of sugar to supplement feed, as well as rehabilitating 1,722 beehives. Opposition MP Jesse Sokuru says food security is still a concern for those affected by TC Yasa in Anna. The Ministry needs to refocus and develop high value and low volume products such as Angona. Dalo, ginger, cocoa and vanilla. Agriculture teams are on the ground collecting data from the impact of tropical cyclone Ana, which caused widespread damage, especially in Viti Levu. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Strong winds and heavy rain battered parts of the Lao group this morning. Tropical depression 09F was located about 60 kilometers south-southwest of Kambara at around midday today, drifting southwards. Mode Secondary School Vice Principal Taufa Vunise says the weather caught the people of Nassau and Korotolu by surprise. The Mode Primary School and excuse me, Mode Primary and Secondary Schools were closed early so as not to risk the lives of students and teachers. It's been seeing rain and the uh, strong winds at times. And uh, we don't attend uh, classes because of uh, the safety of the students and teachers is paramount at the moment. And time now to join Ritika with tonight's business. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up, bad weather holds sea travel, and Fiji Airways extends flight credits. Stay with us. मरसाने नाइक है बोंगो अलगू लटो का रेडियो फीजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धार Welcome back. Large commercial vessels in the sheltered areas between Natovi and Ovalau, Sawasavu and Tabuni were allowed to resume operations today after brief halt due to bad weather. Maritime Safety Authority Chief Executive Simon Gravenel says this also includes large passenger ships that service other areas except for southern Lao waters. Tropical Depression 09F is slow moving and is expected to trek southwards of Fiji in the next 24 hours. And Gravenel says they've had to cease the operation at midday for safety. All concerned parties are taking heed of the warning and working accordingly. Sinifa from HFC Bank is here now with the latest from the money market. Good evening. During the first quarter of the new year, New Zealand's inflation expectations accelerated. The New Zealand first quarter average first year inflation expectations rose to 1.73% against 1.23% forecast in the last quarter. Meanwhile, the US dollar weakened near its lowest level in some time as investors began doubting about the recent rally driven up by expectations of a faster pandemic recovery in the U.S. than in other countries. Also, the second attempt to gain an impeachment against Donald Trump and the discord in the U.S. are also seen as weakening the dollar. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Thank you, Sinifa. Here are today's exchange rates as set early this morning. The Fiji dollar rose against the U.S. greenback, the PNG Kina, the Euro and the Yen. However, it slipped against the Aussie and Kiwi dollars and the Chinese Yuan. On the commodities market, oil continued upward past $58 per barrel. Gold increased by $32 to $1,843 per ounce and silver closed up at $2,770 an ounce. Fiji Airways has extended the flight credits validity of its customers up to the end of 2022. The credits are for cancelled flights due to COVID-19 enforced border closures from March of last year. 
Chief Executive Andre Billion says this extension offers a greater peace of mind to customers holding credit with Fiji Airways. Billion says the extension by 12 months will allow customers to choose another travel time that suits their circumstances and requirements. That's all from the business world. It's sports time now. Good evening. Ahead in sports, still hope for our athletes. And Fijiana, blessed with opportunities. This and more after the break. Marsani Naika, Gomba Lugu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2 May. Some sports will have until the end of June to qualify for the Tokyo Olympic Games. Oceania National Olympic Committee President Dr. Robin Mitchell says some athletes will only know whether they've made the cut only a few weeks from the Games. Aquila Lama reports Fiji is considered one of the lucky nations out of the 17 Oceania countries. Fiji's Olympic preparations are much better compared to other countries in our region. We are fortunate here in Fiji that sport returned very quickly uh, in August and essentially we have no more crowds and uh, competition is already underway. But for some of the other countries that's still a, a restriction. Team Fiji may have an advantage but it doesn't take away from existing challenges. It's a really difficult situation from an athlete's point of view, also from the national federations. Um, but I think we've just got to remain positive. Uh, and, uh, and resilient because, um, you know, keep, to keep on training uh, with all the uncertainty that's going, going on is, is quite difficult. However, ONOC will ensure its member countries are assisted, especially when it comes to funding, after the IOC approved an increased budget for the region. We were also given a budget by the International Olympic Committee, so our funds have increased by 14% to. 25 million for the next four years and we have to prepare a budget for that. So With almost zero international travel last year, ONOC still has funds available from its last budget to use in the new four-year cycle. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Whenever he sets his eyes on something, George Fong always leaves his mark and now he is targeting his first Olympic Games. However, Fong must make the qualifying 640 points, which he and other top archers are trying to achieve at the World Archery Fiji National Series. Karlin Tavi with the details. Fong has represented Fiji in the Oceania Archery Championship and the Pacific Games, but is yet to make the Olympics. So the main overriding goal will be to reach the Olympic minimum qualifying score uh, that all the archers are looking to achieve that. Team archery will need to increase the intensity of training to achieve the much needed result. As we move forward as the demands of training increase in addition to needing to perform uh, in the series, it will be uh, an interesting challenge. He scored a combined 513 points at the World Archery Fiji National Series at St. Joseph Secondary School last week. According to WAF General Secretary Ajay Balu, Fong and other archers will need 640 points to qualify. But we've got George here, we've got Nathan here and Rajiv who are battling for the position. But they have to uh, shoot a ma minimum standard score, which is 640. To qualify and World Archery Fiji National Series will have six competitions and archers will need to participate in every round to gain maximum points. Carly Nitavi, FBC Sports. The Fijiana 7th team will continue to use local tournaments to test its players. This is one of the alternatives to help the team prepare for the Tokyo Olympic Games since the World Rugby 7th Series is still on hold. To the final quarter. Players in the 27 member squad are rotated in each tournament. This is all part of uh, our development and, and, and plan uh, for, uh, and uh, provide uh, equal opportunity and uh, game time for all the squad members. 
Through these local competitions, the team is able to test some key areas that can't be done during training alone. You test their you know, execution, you test uh, how they approach every game and how they continue to develop as a unit and, and, and keep uh, a solid combination. It is also a good selection process, narrowing down the best for the Tokyo Games in July. The only way we can uh, keep monitoring and identifying the best players that we can select going towards uh, the Olympics. Former National Sevens manager Rob Covesi says competition from grassroots teams will push the national players to another level. They've been pushed you know, from the pool from the pool right through to the quarters, semi and the finals. And especially placing a lot more competition within the training squad itself. The squad will be rotated again in the upcoming tournaments, including the Nawaka Sevens in two weeks and the second leg of the Super Series. Talima Terkula, FPC Sports. Around 70 teams have been confirmed for the Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby League, set to begin next Saturday. 38 teams have been registered in the South East Division, while 21 teams will compete in the Western Division. FSSRL General Secretary Dan Vakamode says this is part of the association's strategic plan to help take the sport to a whole new level. Last year, uh, when uh, the competition came to a halt, we managed to put up our strategic plan. So we need to increase by 3% and we managed to, to achieve that. And uh, by looking at the number of uh, teams uh, as the competition has been expanded, uh, we've seen that uh, we are achieving our strategic plan. Sparks are already flying on and off the court in the first round of the Australian Open Tennis Tournament with Novak Djokovic in the thick of it. The world number one has issues with the tournament's quarantine rules and his feud with Nick Kajos is blowing up again after his opening match. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. Chinese-made phone claims to have fastest processor. Details after the break. Kumarasami Naika, Bongo Alugu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2, me, Purana Gana, Lage, Ame, Bota Chala Lage. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkan. Tropical Depression 09F is moving southward, away from Fiji, but brisk winds and rough seas continue to affect eastern Vanuatu, Tavuni and the Lao Group, where gale warnings remain in force. Looking at the west, they had a mixture of sun and showers today. From Pacific Harbour to Suva, periods of sunshine were interrupted by occasional light showers. And in the north, cloudy skies with heavy rainfall at times. At sea, gusty winds and rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next low tide is at 11.18 tonight, followed by high tide at 5.33 a.m. Sunrise is at 5.57. The outlook for tomorrow, clearing skies with scattered light showers. The outlook for Thursday is generally fair. And in Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask, should FRA rehabilitate critical roads simultaneously? should, you know, uh, repair the road and then move on to another. Prioritize okay. We have to plan. We have to plan the road. Not like we're just doing one road, then after that, they leave that one, not yet finish that, go. Leave that to the side and have to go and do another. I think uh, they should start making the road during uh, coffee hours. So that the road is clear, then they can do it uh, decide and decide they can have all the road by that time. Okay? That uh, tomorrow morning, uh, maybe five o'clock, the road is clear again, then we can use both sides of the road. They should finish work on one side of the road and then move to another section. And recapping our main stories, almost 30% of Fijians living in poverty, late school arrivals due to traffic delays and villagers told to vacate dangerous homes. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question. This week we are asking, are the prolonged traffic delays justifiable in order to have better roads? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day. Believe it or not, this is a sunset over Valelevu in Nasinu, captured by Nitin Maharaj. 
You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news for this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mudamanda. मार सामने नाइक है बम्बो लुगु लटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन